All right, hello again, everybody. In my last video, um, where I'm working on the computer for my son, I left off. Uh, I was working on uh, getting administrative shares to work on Windows 10. This is my son's. I'm VNC'd into my the computer, the Lenovo computer that I'm setting up for my son. And uh, yeah, in that last video, I got administrative shares working on this. And I put that, uh, how to do that in the description. But I also put in the description that I was having trouble with uh, uh, losing my VNC connection to my, uh, to, to the computer that I was working on for my son. Whenever I did any an administrative task or any, any task that would check with uh, UAC user access control. So kind of got that figured out and it's probably not the best way that most people would want to do it, but everybody's different and I'll explain my reasoning for why I'm doing it this way. So my problem that I put in the description in the last video, when I'm talking about the administrative shares was when I VNC in this, into this computer that I'm working on for my son, this guy right here, whenever I did an administrative task, like run an installer or run the task manager, I lose control and I'd have to walk over to the computer with a little screen and uh, close the installer window or task manager and then I'd have control again. So I knew what would probably work for that, but I didn't want to do it that way because I didn't have to do that on my Windows Pro laptop that I VNC into often in some of my other videos. And by the way, when I do VNC into computers and uh, there's like uh, graphics going over my Wi-Fi, my analog mic does pick up some of those radio signals and it adds a little squeak. So I don't know if it's uh, squeaking right now, but if you hear an annoying little squeaky sound, that's what it is. It's my analog, analog mic picking up Wi-Fi. Um, when I do VNC, there's like, you know, some, there's a data transfer happening and that's, that's what it is. But anyway, um, yeah, so if I went here and I ran task manager, I would lose control. So you see, I'm running task manager. I still have control. If I ran an installer, same thing would happen. I would lose control. So <clears throat> there's different ways to fix this. So one thing is you can make a shortcut to your uh, VNC server. And well, let me tell you the first, the first thing that you, what people should be doing that I'm not doing because I have OCD. What you can do is you can uh, run your VNC server in service mode. So when you run your VNC server, go to task manager. Let's look at it. So here it is, right here. So obviously this one's got 53 megabytes. This is obviously the session. And this is just another process, just listening for other would-be connections, you know? So yeah, this is the connection right now from my computer to the Lenovo. And this is the one just waiting for more connections in case I have to, if it has to build another session, another connection. Um, but I'm running this in a user mode. So if you see Let's go to details. Let's go down to the type VNC processes if I can find them. Uh, where are we? Here we go, right here. So the user is, that's my son, right? So I'm running him against, logged in as my son. If you would register the type VNC service, I have it on register right now because I don't want to use the type VNC service. You'd register to type VNC service. It gets registered as a system service. And then you run the type VNC service. Then it'll show up here in the process list. It'll show up as a system process like this. It won't be a user process. It'll be a system process. And then also in services, it'll show up 
as a service here. Type VNC shouldn't be in here because it's not running as a service. See, there's no type VNC at all. Your your basic window stuff. So yeah, obviously the right way to do it is run it as a service. But see this little V down here in the system tray. I like to see that. I'm gonna clean out this notification tray some too because I don't, I don't. Some of that stuff doesn't need to be there. I want. I like to simplify it, and I like to know what's running. I don't like to hide system tray items, so I like to make that as lean as possible. So I'm gonna trim this whatever doesn't need to be down here in the system tray, whatever need, doesn't need to be down here. I'm gonna get rid of it. But this V right here, I like to know that the type VNC server is running, and if you run it as a service only, I don't think it shows that icon there it just runs the system service in the background and you don't know it's running i like to know it's running so i like to run it in user mode so yeah if you run it as a service you're going to be able to do this you're going to be able to do an administrative task and you're not going to have any problems but i don't want to do it that way just because one i'm not doing it that way on my laptop and we'll see remember how i did it and two um, I want to have that icon down there to know it's running. I don't want to forget that, you know, there's a potential, you know, security hole, you know, uh, <laughs> VNC servers running in the background with, uh, you know, access to the computer via, I think it's uh, UDP port 5900. So I like to know that that's running. So the problem is in user mode, like I said, if I do any administrative tasks, it's going to break my connection. So one thing you can do is you can make a shortcut to the uh, VNC server and you can run that in, uh, run it as administrator. And that will, uh, that will um, let you do any uh, tasks that would normally uh, require user access control like UAC. And that'll work. The only problem is you can't. Here's the here's the shortcut to the system startup folder. This is the, this is the path you'd put anything you want to start up on the computer for all users for system, not just per user. This is where you want to put it for everybody. So I like to put stuff there. <clears throat> like this is my home network. So I do. Yeah, I know a lot of this stuff. I mean, you don't do this stuff at work. This is <laughs> this is work um, home safe stuff. So. Yeah, I'll run it for all users just to make things simple. That's the path right there if you want to throw any, any startup items for everybody or the whole system. So I have it in here. And as you can see, I'm not running in administrator mode. Because if even if you run this shortcut in administrator mode, it's not going to start. You're going to restart this computer. And even if you have this here, you're not going to see it down here in the system tray because it's not going to start because as a security feature, um, uh, user applications or yeah, yeah, user mode applications aren't going to run at startup. You'd have to manually start it up every time. I don't want to do that. So what you could do is, uh, what I did is uh, pretty much kill off UAC. And I'm not talking about uh, doing this, you know, getting rid of the annoyance of UAC bothering you all the time. I'm talking about killing it off in the registry. So let me see if I can remember the, uh, or if I was still in there. Let me see. Oh, no, I was messing with notifications. That's the next thing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can get rid of, uh, the uh, firewall not notifications on this computer I'm setting up for my son, but maybe that's for another video. I'll I'll get it done. I'll see if this one registry tweak that I have that works in Windows 10 Pro works in Windows 10 Home. But anyway, back to uh, um, let me let me run a uh, VNC server uh, in user mode. But allowing me to, to do uh, administrative tasks. Um, let me see, it was software, Microsoft, Windows, Let's see if I can find it. 
Windows. Current version, I think. I think it was a policy. Policies system. Ah, oh, yeah, this is it. So this guy right here. This is uh this is not gonna be in there, I don't think, by default. You'll just have to add it in there. So you know you'd right click new D word. And you can name it that, enable, LUA, I think that stands, I don't know, locked user access or whatever. So, yeah, obviously I gave it a uh, value of uh, zero because I don't want locked user access. Yes, you don't want to do this if you're in an unsafe spot. You want user access control and you want as many uh, safety nets as possible if you if you have your computer going around on different networks and stuff like that but this is behind a real firewall i don't need the software firewall i don't need uac i want my son to be you know what i mean it's almost like a gaming computer and i'm going to back it up and stuff so it's not going to have any like work secure work sensitive data on it and stuff like that so yeah i'll put a uh i'll, I'll uh explain uh, maybe i'll put a registry entry for this in the um, in the description for this video but after you do that you add this uh, registry entry and you set that to zero then you can um, drop this just like you would normally drop it off in uh, the startup tab and then you don't have to run it as administrator and you don't have to run it as a service so you'll know your vnc server is running and you'll be able to open task manager and run installers and not lose your connection so yeah that's one way to do it yeah it's not the most secure way to do it but you know i'm about making things easy if you're not a total idiot <laughs> you don't need to have uh um the Windows software firewall running. You don't need to have UAC enabled. It's the same thing with uh, with um, a lot of people know. Just like you can have all those things turned on and stuff, and you can still compromise your computer if you're not careful with your email. You open up an email attachment, run an executable from somebody you don't know. You're really more protected by your brain on your computer than you are from all these other things. Now, for yeah, for some people, yeah, like your grandmother, yeah, maybe you. <laughs> You don't want to disable UAC. You don't want to disable the Windows firewall and all that stuff. It's the same thing. Like, on, you know, on my computer here, I got, you know, this is a script. By default, you can't run scripts, one-click scripts from Windows startup in Windows. But I got a, uh, a registry tweak for that, too. So, yeah, this is a script here from one of my other videos. That's the little go-to-sleep menu that I made. So the script's going to run only because I did it a tweak um yeah you can't open more what is it 16 or 17 items at the same time in one application from file explorer for uh <laughs> for the same reasons but if you do a registry tweak you can like if you opened up file explorer and you want to open like more than 16 songs in winamp or whatever mp3 player you have it's not going to open or it's even you're going to even lose the option if you have more than 16 or 17 uh, items displayed unless you edit that in the registry which i've done uh because obviously uh there, there i guess they're imagining somebody will send a script to you that'll you know pretty basically eat up all your computer's memory by telling one piece of software to open up like <laughs> every jpeg on drive c so i guess that's what that that's all about but anyway yeah that's how uh the vnc's server <clears throat> that's how i have it running right now so i can see it down there don't have to run it as a service and I don't have to manually uh, uh, edit the uh, shortcut to run it as administrator because it doesn't need to check against UAC that it's running as a administrator and also if you're running it as a service like I took like I told you before it's gonna show up here let me see if I can find it again so there'll be, see how there's a drop down for ThinkPad message client loader? There's a service running for it. 
So the same thing would happen if you were running uh, type fancy as a, as a service, you'd see a little drop down for it and you'd see the service process. But yet, I'm not running it as a service. I'm running it as a user, as you can see here in the details. Uh, let me find it. Yep, it's running against my son's username. It's not running as a ser system service, but I can still do everything because this user is no longer required to check against UAC for administrative privileges and all that jive. So, yep, hopefully that helps somebody and that worked for me. So, not the safest way to do it, but if you like to just have things work easy for you, that's that's one way you can do it. So, anyway, everybody have a nice Sunday.